um, but you'll, you'll, be, you'll be partly marked on your score. Whoever figures out how a business works and, and gets the best score will, uh, will get high marks, and, and likewise if you get lower marks. But then at the end, we'll just test what you've learned about the game. We'll give you an, an assessment where you can report back uh, what you learned about managing a business. It is a startup business, um, so there's an element of entrepreneurship in it as well. But we think it's a good way for you to practice rather than just sit and listen and mug. So uh, I encourage you, if you're interested, come and apply for this. Love to work with you. Thank you. will 
uh, also depend upon your being there throughout the semester. Okay, so make sure that you make you are there. You plan yourself in such a way that even if you need to take a little time off for some personal reason, it is taking into consideration all your tests and assignments which have been planned for the semester. Okay, the next subject that we have is uh, we're going to look at marketing. Okay, we have Shikha Ma'am talk to you about marketing, introduction to marketing, which she and Ranki sir handle together. So she will tell you a little bit about this. Okay, so even in marketing, uh, we're going to have a continuation to the first semester. The major thing about this semester, and most of your time will be taken up with, is the Marketing Mania project. As soon as Ranki sir is back and in his first lecture, he's going to discuss this 50 mark project with you all. It's all about, uh, I've already spoken about it in class, it's about giving you a failed brand and you're supposed to relaunch the brand. We'll make the group so we'll give you the option to do that by yourself. And of course we're going to continue with uh, what we've not been able to finish off in the last semester. So I've started up with pricing in my class, but we're going to touch upon each of them and go into uh, extreme detail with pricing, place, promotion, uh, new product development. And Ramki sir is going to add a couple of new uh, I mean, topics to your semester as well in, based on case studies that he gives you in class. So we're going to have 20% as class participation which is uh, your, uh, your attendance in class and how you guys, how, I, mean, uh, I mean attendance for 20% there. And 30% is your end term examination. So this time maybe your paper, how, how many marks will the paper be? Same. We'll figure that. So this time maybe we won't give you so much of writing like we did last semester. We probably do something like an MCQ which could be half and half and maybe one case study and MCQs as well. So we'll change that a little bit. But the major thing that's happening is your marketing mania and your final project submissions will be in December. Your final, uh, you will have a jury and a whole panel who's going to come actually to judge these projects. It was a big thing last year. So we're hoping it will be the same here. And uh, I think the new topics Ramki sir will discuss with you all in class when he's around. Anything else, Sonia? No, I think that's good. Thank you. So that's two out of your um, six subjects. I'm going to ask Vipul sir to talk to you about fundamentals of accounting now. And what's in store for you here? See, as far as account is concerned, the <laughs> topics what we have covered in the initial stages was very less and the burden is coming in the next semester. We are going to cover almost six subjects and uh, six topics we are going to cover. Um, after the last one is the theory part and uh, departmental financial accounting. Incomplete record is only need your base. Otherwise all the rest of the topics are completely independent. They are not connected with any accountancy basic knowledge. So if you pay attention, if you come with that attitude that no, I don't know accounts at all and I can't do accounts, it's not like that. Departmental accounting has nothing to do with the accounts of journal entries and ledger. Even uh, accounting of higher purchase, we don't need any base for that. So if you just pay attention on all this, it will be covered it up. Examination pattern is already mentioned. 20 marks is class participation. Class participation means not physical even mental and uh, with textbook not to take pages from here and take one pen from here and start writing something because forcefully you are, you know. So proper class participation, 20 marks, 30 marks is a class test which will comprise of two tests topic wise, 15 marks each and the last will be 50 marks end term exam. What we are planning is we will conduct 100 marks paper which will be reduced to 50 marks. 100 marks paper will be absolutely just a replica of what paper you are going to appear for the final exam. And this will be for 3 hours? The paper it will be, will be, yeah, three it will be for 3 hours and it will be exactly the same pattern and same way like how you are going to appear for the board exam. So that is the examination pattern. Uh, books I have already mentioned. I don't box, so you must have already received. And uh, remaining you can refer to the Manan Prakashan I have today. That's all.
You're going to have the same assessment pattern, that is 20% class participation. You're going to have your regular tests in class, which is your in-class assessments. And you're going to have 50% weightage being given to the end of paper. But the papers will carry away, will be a hundred mark paper, will be hundred mark papers, and they will be for three hours, so that you get into the practice of writing for three hours, as Vipul sir said. Okay. So we have uh, microeconomics, which is going to be taught to you by Ankita ma'am. She's not here today, but because these are the various topics that will be covered, this is as per the BCom syllabus. Okay. So the same topics that are to be covered will be continued, and you have all these topics which are going to be covered under. Economics, that's demand analysis, product uh, theory of production and cost, revenue analysis, market structure, pricing practices and market failure, and capital budgeting. And you will be referring to the IDOL uh, textbook that is there and the same assessment pattern. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to call um, Manthan to talk to you about quantitative techniques, which is your mathematics and statistics related paper. So, uh, I'll keep this short. If you notice, you'll see the math portion and the statistics portion to be three times more than the first semester, which obviously means, not to scare you, but you have to put triple the effort in mathematical terms. Uh, so, this semester is not going to be that easy. The ownership is on you guys to start from today, to start working towards this, because obviously a lot of you are already struggling with the first semester portion. Okay? I'll try to make it as easy as possible in class, but outside class, I expect you guys to come whenever you all feel like you're lagging behind. Yeah? The core text is the same. You'll be getting a book from IDOL, or the Mumbai University book. And you all can use Manan Prakashan for now to practice. The assessment details, like Sonia Man mentioned, are the same. And uh, yeah, the objective, so math is only in this year, it's not in the second and third year. But it's really important to identify patterns in data once you go ahead. If you want to be entrepreneurs, you'll have to identify patterns. Which is why you'll really, really need to concentrate on statistics now. Okay? So that's about it. So these are your six subjects. Kolkata uh, sir will be coming shortly and he'll tell you about entrepreneurship, which is your six subjects. So five we've gone through. That is accountancy, economics, and maths. And then you, we've also gone through finance as well as marketing. Okay, so entrepreneurship, you will have Omkar sir coming and talking to you about that shortly. What we are, we're going to request Pratik sir. Now this is your, the options that you have from <coughs> management by practice. One has been explained to you by David sir. He's already told you what the business simulation game is going to be like. Okay, and he will detail that for you a little later. Um, Pratik sir is going to talk to you about startup incubation, which is what he's going to be handling. Yeah, so, uh, good morning. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, on startup incubation, I'm just going to go about just telling you one simple thing. Most of you obviously want to be an entrepreneur, at least that's what I assume so. And uh, whoever wants to be an entrepreneur, there are two ways. Either you're putting your own money or either you'll fund yourselves uh, externally. So in this case, uh, I'm going to go to the first route, which is basically making a business plan which uh, will help you all go to an investor or go to a funding uh, VC to pitch to them as to get money. Now, business plan has a lot of components, including cash flow and PNL being the most important one. Of course, with accountancy and mathematics and all the permutations and the combinations, the derivatives and everything, all of that will come into the picture in PNL and the cash flow analysis. But before we get to that, there's a lot of uh, strategic moves that you'll need to make on the business plan, which helps you all ideate on the business that you all want to grow. It's going to be a PPT presentation, of course, but there's going to be a little more. I know in the first semester, there's not much that you're going to catch hold of. Uh, thanks to people who are attending, but uh, with due course of time, you will start realizing that defining processes within a particular business is the most important thing than just looking at PNL. and Because if your process and your base is not there, it's not rightly defined for things to get executed, there's no ways uh, you're going to have a sustainable business or a sustainable ecosystem for running a successful business. So in startup incubation, in the second SEM, I'm going to take you through all these verticals. Of course, you can see the time that has been uh, 
define the time is defined for a group or an individual who needs to give that much time for getting the project up and running by the end of the semester. So uh, in startup incubation, it will all be about making a business plan and a framework of the full business, whichever you all want to go forward as. Just to let you all know, of course this is a virtual one, but if you all are serious about the idea which you all want to take it forward, then obviously we can work around that also in the same business plan. That's how we have done it back in our days. So startup incubation will be all about how to pitch to an investor and how to make a particular business plan. That's about it. Any questions? Of course. <laughs> I don't think you all are 
ready enough to do that until you all are CAs and CS. So what I am trying to say is fundamental analysis, reading charts, reading the balance sheet of the company is completely different. It is a bit difficult. It is for long term investment propositions. Can you see the share prices and the balance sheet invest today and get out tomorrow with a profit? With fundamentals? I doubt. So if you say Tata Steel is a good company to invest in, is it a good company? Blue chip company, Tata Steel? If you would have invested in 2011, you wouldn't have earned anything until 2015. Four years, no profit, no return on investment. So just by the performance of the balance sheet, can you invest today and get out tomorrow with a profit? Not at all. Basically, fundamental analysis is for long-term prospective. It's for investment purposes. Technical analysis is for both. Short-term as well as long-term. There are traders who invest today and get out again today by the afternoon. So invest for a few hours and get out with a few percent of profits. Not bad for a day. There are traders who invest today, get out after a week with almost the same percentage of return that a bank provides you in a year. So this is how important technical analysis is. Now, whether you are going to become an entrepreneur, whether you are going to become an employee, whether you would work for someone or work for yourself, this would be applicable everywhere. If you are an entrepreneur, you can have certain investments in the market which will be a support system. If you are an employee, you can again have certain investments in the market which will be, again be a support system for your personal investments. So all of this helps. All of this helps a lot. Another alternative is mutual funds. Again, mutual funds subject to market risk. Have you heard that? So, it's not necessary that you'll be always making a profit, a 20% or a 30% per annum. It's not possible. It all depends on the market performance. The worst thing that you all can do is invest by tips that you get from people. Because you don't know where the share price is going to go. It's like being lost in a world where you have no directions. So, this particular science will give you a direction. It will try, help you predict where the markets would go in the future. Where are the markets right now? With, where is Sensex at how many points? 30,000, 32,000, 33,000. So, where was Sensex 10 years back? 8,000. So, from 8,000 points to 32,000 points in 10 years, less than 10 years, 4 times the return on your money. Right? Can you imagine doing the same with a bank? I don't think so. Money doubles every 8 years in fixed investments. Now with the interest rates going down day by day, even that is not possible. However, I am showing you a very starry picture about this. Please understand, you can also go on the other side of the coin, that is a loss. So this particular science needs a lot of practice, a lot of patience. You have to burn your hands sometimes, that is why the dummy portfolio in the beginning. Alright. Any questions? as far as this program is concerned. I would be happy. The dummy portfolio, you would be selecting a number of shares and you would be investing a certain amount. Let's say you are allowed to invest up till 10 lakh of rupees. You are, you are allowed to choose any 5 stocks. The proportion that you want to invest in each stock will be decided by you based on your analysis. And it would be real time so, what is the share price of that particular company today? What will it be two months from now? You would predict it today and you would see whether you are true or false at the end of two months. But then that will be like, um, you'll predict, a, you'll obviously predict a positive return. Not necessary. There are people who will sell the share now and buy it later, something called a short sell because you know that the share price is going to fall. Right? 
It's not only a positive perspective. So there are many things to it. There is a whole lot to learn. It's a big blue ocean that you have to dive in. So what I request you, only if you are really interested in this particular science, apply for it because it requires a lot of patience, a lot of practice. Also, usually you all are learning the same subjects, same people, same teachers. So the knowledge that you all gain is the same. What differentiates you in an interview? Something that you have more than the other person seated outside. Now technical analysis is not taught at many institutions. What will differentiate you from the rest, from the outside world is something additional that you know. This can be one of them. Right? So there are more positives to it than the negatives. The only negative I can see for learning this is you might incur a loss. But that also can be taken care of if you practice, practice for a few years before actually investing real money.
SaaS, Repass, you know? software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. How do online marketplaces actually work? How do these biggies like Amazon, how do these biggies like Flipkart actually work? What happens on the back end? What happens on the business side of it? What happens on the technological side of it? We also look at online listing platforms. How do they function? And uh, there are three books which I would like you guys to refer. I have a PDF copy of all these three. Uh, Leading Digital, George Westerman, Digital Playbook and Digital Business by uh, Coopy. Okay, or whatever it is. Uh, the final thing this time is uh, you have to go ahead and give me a blueprint of how exactly will you go ahead and set up an online business. Okay, this semester is exclusively dedicated to getting you acquainted and familiar with how to start up in the online space. Alright, fair enough? Any questions? Of course.
whatever you can write. We are not going to push you to 5,000 words a report or something like that. We know you write a lot, but we'll make sure you write it creatively now. Yes, any other questions? I think you had a question there. Uh, someone at the back? Omar, Omar. Omar. Questions, guys? I'm sure you have a lot of questions, at least for this course. So, uh, have a look at the slide, guys. Hi. So, all our classes in the SD studio begins with a thought. It begins with one word, probably it begins with a story. So, we're going to start with a thought, and all you need to have is a curious mind. You need to ask questions. And I'm sure when we start this process, you'll have a lot of questions about this course and you'll really enjoy this process. We tell our stories. There are a lot of stories that we can share. Some of my elective students are here. I can see you know how the elective went, right? Uh, so the process is going to be a very inter interactive process. We are not just going to be, it, it's not going to be a classroom arrangement. Hi. Hi. So. So we are definitely going to interact, we are going to share our stories, we are going to talk about it, write about it, sing about it, dance about it, I don't know what we are going to do, but we, it is a creative class, you are going to definitely enjoy each and every moment of this class, right? Uh, we are going to collaborate, I mean, all our studios begins with understanding yourself as where you belong in this larger scheme of things, and then we also collaborate with your peers, you collaborate with your faculty, you collaborate with with even a vendor, you collaborate with a street professional. So basically you, you understand what your role is with collaborating with another person, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look into issues through critical thinking. So I think when eventually we reach a point where we're going to discuss, we're going to understand where and how things are done, how things are made, how, is, how are we going to create a lot of creative things in this world, right? Of course, nothing works without empathizing with your user. You need to empathize. You need to empathize with yourself first. You need to understand where you stand. Uh, so the writing skills are more or less going to be reflections, your responses towards uh, what you learn in this creative studio class. And then we also have, uh, you know, at some point Sonam did mention that we are going to go through the design process. So all of this is going to be in an incremental process. We're going to go step by step as we're going to begin with a thought, we're going to create, we're going to ideate, we're going to draw, write, and then eventually reach a process where we're going to make something. Are you guys excited about making? Creating? No? You said no. Yeah? Yeah? Are you excited about making something? Uh, it's a whole new world of creativity that is going to be opened up to you guys. Make sure you enjoy each process. Ask questions. Ask questions to yourself, your friends, your faculty. Make sure you enjoy this course. Because there's a reason why this course is introduced in this management study. Thank you. Any other questions before we leave? Basically, two more electives in management by practice. So we will have the professors coming in and then you have to make your choice today. Okay? So you will be making your choice of your elective today. You will be sharing this choice in terms of the order of ranking. So you will give me more, because this is only restricted to 50 students per class. 50, or we are going to divide it equally. So 50 or 55 students okay, per elective. We have five different electives. Okay, and we will not take in more than 50 in any elective. So you it will be on a first come first basis. All the people who are here will be giving will be given the first option. The ones who are not present today, okay, they will not be given the first preference. Okay. In case an elective gets full up, then they will have to go to the elective which is not available as their first choice. They have to take their second choice. Okay. That's how it's going to work. Is that clear to everyone? Okay. I have some tell me what the second choice. Choice today, you will have Anuja ma'am and Ankit sir coming 
and telling you about the remaining two electives, then you will go, your uh, class representative, not your class representative, your DRs will be the ones who will be taking your choice in order of preference and the electives will be allotted today. Uh, sorry, we will have all the data and we will allot the electives before the end of this week so that next week on Wednesday your electives can start in a full-fledged manner. Right? Any questions regarding the structure of your academic uh, curriculum for this semester? Which final exams? The final exams will be sometime in the month of March. No, in terms of for us, we will finish with in the month of February with the syllabus. Okay, and month of March will be your uh, beginning of March will be your internal exams, and then we will have the crash courses for BCom, and your exam should be in the month of April, May.